Oh yeah, July 21st. Hey, if you're not losing flies, you're not fishing hard enough. Yeah. So John, this is uh, your ret retired fly stack here. It is, isn't it? You can see this one's got some solid teeth marks in it, so. <laughs> Sweet. You can do quite a bit of different stuff with the bobber. Yeah. Um, one thing I really like to do now that the river's higher is put a streamer under the bobber. Oh, nice. Um, and just dead drift it. Okay. So um, we're gonna do a little bit of that, a little bit of conventional nymphing. Um, we'll see if dry fly fishing picks up. Yeah. Not so, quite hopper season yet. You know, we're getting there. Um, this upper stretch doesn't have as many hoppers as a little bit lower. Yeah. Um, if we do I see I was looking hoppers. for the boat launch and I was like, oh, there it is. It's, uh, <laughs> you gonna be able to back it all the way in and drop it right in? Yeah. All right, this is gonna be a test. Pretty good down here. Beautiful. Gotta <laughs> get all loosened up. There you go. A little workout. Yeah. You in the river. Get all the juices flowing right away. <laughs> taking this guy fishing and he had just been given this new Winston as a retirement gift and it was really windy that day and he set his rod in the car door and the wind blew the car door shut on his brand new rod. Oh no. Never even got to fish it. Wow. size little streamer okay. under a bobber. Kind of targeting some of those bigger fish with that technique. Okay. And so what happens is when they bump up the flows in the summertime, that flushes a lot of the baby salmon down through the system. Okay. So we're gonna throw a fly that kind of looks like one of the, we call them salmon smolt. Yep. Um, we're gonna kind of impersonate one of those. Bounce it off the bottom. Just like yeah, it's not necessarily right on the bottom. It's kind of, what it does is it just kind of swims around like this, floats around. Um, and I'll show you the knot that I tie that kind of allows it to do that. Kind of loop knot. What kind of knot? A loop knot. Loop knot, okay. I can't remember, are there still cuts up this high? Oh yeah. Yep, so as you get higher up, there's more and more cuts just because they need colder, cleaner water. Yep. Um, so as you get down, you'll still catch some cutthroat down in Ellensburg, yep. but the water is just a lot warmer down there, so. That's cool. Made this morning? Late, late last night. Wow. <laughs> you make them yourself? Uh-huh. Cool. Yeah, I think 
had some nice uh, it's been over the years it's been like trips in the Yellowstone. Yeah, they get to fish them a little bit different than we do over here, but I am of the belief that a lot of fish sit on those little shelves, you know, with big drop-offs and things like that, but I, I believe that they sit right on the shelf. So if you're, say you're casting this fly, and you have an opportunity to throw it up on some shallow water, that's eventually going to turn into deep. I like to give it some quick tugs and then let it drift off the deep. Just the floor of the edge. Exactly. Yeah. That catches their attention. Yeah. I got a little tip split shot on here and then you're gonna be good to go. Tip split shot. And I pop. So you're throwing a lot of stuff around. Okay. Uh, so when you're making this cast, yep. you know, it's not necessarily that river runs through it, tight loops, hundred foot cast that you see in that movie. It's gonna be more of a functional cast. Yep. Um, big open loops, more of a lob than anything. Sure. You just want to get those flies out there. Presentation isn't necessarily as important with this technique just because they're going to be sinking anyways. So. Sure. What uh, what fly did you put on that? So it's leading with a stone fly. Stone it's running with a little, what's called a CBC jig head pheasant tail. Uh, so they're likely going to key in on that pheasant tail. But the summer stone fight is starting to be uh, Summer stones are starting to move. So there's a good chance they'll. Oh, other side. Good. I'm glad we don't have to hear him for the next 10 minutes. Is that, uh, is that cold? Woo! Look who's bringing it in. Hey, boys. Having a great day. I haven't, no. How about you? Nice, good job. There you go. Nice. All right. It works. That's a, that's a beauty. West Love Cutthroat Trout there. Probably nice. like 13 inches or so. Sweet. There he goes. Well done. He's fat. Yeah. That's a, that's a hearty meal. Yep. Uh, all these wind knots. It's never, it's never Cash knots? Yeah, never the fisherman's fault. Right. <laughs> a lot of wind knots going on in my fishing line. Yep, water hole. Do it one more time. You say hiya? Yeah. Okay. Right there, come on, fish. There's some water that comes off that log. That's a great little spot. Yeah. Once we pass them, you can start getting things up. There you go. What's up, fellas? You got three more?
The fish. The fish was, yeah. <laughs> and I happened to get lucky enough that my line was right where it should have been too. That was fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> nice break. All right, I want to hear about the big one. Big dirty stuff, John. What's that uh, fly called? Uh, this is something I made up. John's he's made up. The, yeah, he's the one name him. No? No, they say you, should, you can't trust anybody that names their own flies. Ooh. How long have you been tying flies? I was about 12. Wow. Yeah. How are you guys doing? We good time. No. Got a two and a half incher. Universal language, why would a worm be unorthodox? Uh, it's a little weird for this time of year. <laughs> <laughs> Light underbody, dark backside. Mm -hmm. Sounds pretty good. Stonefly. All right. So that's going to be the secret sauce. I hope so. I've only said that about 50 times today. Yeah, well, we've got a few on. Rifling through the whole box today. He called Cheeto, Harry Cheeto. Harry Cheeto. <laughs>
How big is the mic? Oh, it's a big one. Nice. You didn't like the net. <laughs> Just make sure you some rapids. Well, perfect. Teamwork right there. Well done, Mike. Yeah, we were heading for some rocks, so. We left at 9.28. We went 9.94 miles. Not bad for uh, a guide to guess that. And uh, we were at, uh, at it for 6 hours and 40 minutes.